One of the most captivating puzzles in the history of flamenco is the sudden appearance of the solea in the first half of the 19th century. Fifteen years ago, together with Lenny Carreyes, we conducted a research that provides some evidences about the conformation of the solea. In episode 37 of the podcast for learning sounds of flamenco, I will show you some of these research results that point a very direct relationship between the solea and a song that arrived from Mexico. Sounds that once were listened. Sounds that once were enjoyed. Sounds that once were danced. Sounds relegated to oblivion. And yet, there is still something we can do for them. Let us summon them. Let us summon them. Welcome to the podcast Forgotten Sounds of Flamenco. My name is Jose Miguel Hernandez Jaramillo, and I invite you to enroll in this journey through the sounds, stories, spaces, and people that were part of the 19th century flamenco. Hello, and thank you so much for being again in our bi-weekly space where we remember some of the forgotten sounds of the 19th century flamenco. In this episode, I will address a topic that they have been wanting to talk about for a long time, that I am very excited about. I am sure that this episode will not leave you indifferent. But before starting, let me remind you how important it is for this project that you follow us on social media and subscribe to this podcast. You will find us on your favorite podcast platforms, as well as the YouTube channel Sonidos Olvidados en No Musicología Creativa. The topic we are discussing today is the result of a research collaboration between myself and the ethnomusicologist Lenica Reyes, conducted 15 years ago. We first presented our findings at the Flamenco Association El Dorado in Barcelona in 2010, and Lenica later published a preview of her work in her master thesis. However, this research has not been published anywhere else, making this episode a special opportunity for you to delve into this unique knowledge. What we addressed in that world was one of the great unknowns of flamenco. Where did the solea came from, which some people currently consider one of the pillars of flamenco? When does it appear? Was it someone's creation or did it derive from another music? Could a musicological analysis give us clues to some of these questions? The research results established the hypothesis that a possible answer to this question can be found in the petenera that arrived from Mexico to Spain. When we proposed this hypothesis, we found no research related to petenera and solea. Starting in 2012, three years after our research, some people commented on this possible link, although without providing too many arguments. Well, in a single episode, I cannot give you details of the whole research that Lenica and I did. However, I will at least comment on some of the keys that led us to propose the hypothesis that the arrival of the Mexican petenera to Spain was an event that could trigger the appearance of the solea. Our research was conducted using a combination of historical analysis, musical comparison, and ethnomusicological interpretation. As you probably know, both Lenica and I are really meticulous and rigorous in our research work, and we would not dare to issue a hypothesis of such significance if we didn't have sufficient consistent arguments. The first of these arguments, and perhaps the most important, is found in a musical piece titled Soledad, Solitude in English, composed by Francisco de Borja Tapia and published in Madrid in 1831, according to the numbering of the printing plates in the score. Tapia considers these songs as a polo. Later, this work will be also known as the Polo de la Soledad. When we analyzed this piece, I said 15 years ago, we realized that it contains surprising similarities with the music of the oldest Mexican petaneras from the years 1827 and 1851, and also in the structure of its lyrics. I will show you some of these similarities, which we presented at El Dorado Lecture. But first, let's listen to this Soledad by Francisco de Borja Tapia. So that the singing can be clearly distinguished, you will hear it with the sound of an oboe, while the piano provides the accompaniment.
The first thing that caught our attention is that this work used chorus from the Mexican petenera of that time. The second lyric of Tapia Soledad contains the following chorus that was sung in Mexican petenera some years before. Horizon loneliness also usually burns, I soledad soledad, with stone firework the mountains. It also got our attention that in the stanza sung before the chorus, the verse I soledad soledad appears between the third and the fourth verses, precisely in the same position as in the petenera. In both pieces, the stanza has the same strophic form for eight syllable lines, and what is also similar in both pieces is how these lines are repeated when sung. If you are watching the YouTube video of this episode on the channel Sonidos Olvidados en No Musicología Creativa, you can see graphically the comparison of these two lyrics, which verse coincide in green and which differs in red. Well, as you can see, the structure of repetition is almost identical in both pieces. In addition to these analogies of the lyrics, we also find musical similarities, melodic, harmonic, and rhythmic, with those of the petenera of that time. As for the melody, perhaps the most obvious similarity is the one with which the third line of both pieces is sung. Let's hear first what is done in the Tapia Soledad and then what is done in one of the peteneras. As you can see, they are exactly the same. There are other melodic similarities, but this is the most obvious. It is exactly the same phrase and in the same position within the work. In addition, we find that the harmonic structure in both pieces is practically identical. For people who do not know about musical theory, the harmonic structure is the skeleton on which the melodies of musical pieces are built. To avoid going into this analysis in much detail with musical terms, I will only tell you that the lyrics of both pieces are based on the association of chords, in some sections in a minor mode and in others in a major mode. The sections in the minor mode usually conclude in the dominant, that is, what we flamencos understand as the mi or e, characteristic of the solea and other flamenco palos. If you are watching the video of this episode, you can see which lines of both pieces have an analogous structure. In blue, I show the verses you see in a minor mode. In pink, those that are in the E or Mi. And in green, those that go on the major mode. The most obvious similarity is that the change from the minor to the major mode occurs in the third line, just a line before I soledad solida. In short, around 70% of the sung lines have the same harmonic structure. Well, we have seen very evident musical similarities between Stapia Soledad and the Mexican petenders of the early 19th century. And you may be wondering, what does this has to do with Solea? The Solea, in addition to the name coincidence with La Soledad, let's remember that in Andalusia's speech, Solea is equivalent to the word Soledad. Curiously, it also has this harmonic structure. It begins and ends in the tone of Mi or E, and the guitar falsettas are also in E. In the singing, the minor, major, and then minor again mode alternate. Therefore, we also see an almost total harmonic analogy between these three pieces, the petenera, the soledad, and the solea. When we obtained the results of the lyrical and musical analysis, we were amazed by the fact that the same chorus was used, that the same line I Soledad Soledad was used in the lyrics and in precisely the same position, that they had identical melodic phrases and that their harmonies were so similar. Therefore, we realized that all these tremendous similarities could hardly result from chance. In addition to all these musical similarities, another argument to support this hypothesis is that the solea is usually sung octosyllabic stanzas of three or four lines. Stanzas of four lines are expected in flamenco and in all sung Iberoamerican lyrics. But what about three lines stanzas? Well, curiously, this type of stanzas was not regularly used in songs before the solea. Our approach is that these three lines stanzas from the solea could derive from a slightly transformed chorus of the petenera. Look, the chorus of the petenera of that time that came from us from Mexico used to be as follows. I soledad soledad, solitude of the one who was to give water to his horse and the horse died of thirst. 
The first of the four lines always used to be the same. I soledad, soledad. What happened if we delete the line that is always the same? Well, we have a stanza of three lines that can be perfectly sung by Solea. Solitude of the one who was to give water to his horse and the horse died of thirst. Perhaps informing the Solea from the Petenera, the people who sang it began to suppress the first verse to keep the other free, creating stanzas directly with free lines. This process could not have been extraordinary at that time because, look, among the free verse Solea's stanza that Antonio Machado included in his book Collection of Flamenco Songs in 1881, Enrique Baltanás finds that song of them derived from other previous stanzas of four verses from which the first line was deleted, precisely the first line. Another of the arguments we are considering is that the name of the Solea came from this song, La Soledad. Perhaps in the early days of the Petenera in Andalusia, it could also be known as the Song of the Soledad, because this word, Soledad, was repeatedly in the chorus of the Peteneras. This could have happened with the French traveler Pierre Charpin attended a Fandango in Veracruz, Mexico in 1831 and commented that the popular song Solera Solera was dance. We believe that it was most likely the song of the Petenera due to its chorus Ay Soledad Soledad, as is also stated by the historian Antonio Garcia de León who provided this testimony in one of his publications. Therefore, the fact that the Petenera was referred as the Soledad or Solera song was not strange. All of these arguments led us to propose the hypothesis that the Mexican Petenera already acclimatized in Andalusia could be one of the triggers of the appearance of something as wonderful and perfect as the Solea. It is possible that the Petenera, which has just arrived in Spain in the 18th 20s, began to be so popular that Francisco de Borja Tapia took it again in his Soledad a few years after the arrival. This Tapia's Soledad was well known in Spain until the end of the 19th century. From the beginning of the 1830s, it continued to transform until what we know today as Solea. After Tapia, we have located the next mention about Soledad in 1844 in Mexico. The composer Max Borer included Soledad as a dance in the work El Carnaval de México, the Carnival of Mexico, in the section of this work that dedicates to Andalusian dances. The date that Flamencology proposed of 1851, the year in which the first mention of the Soledad appears, must be revised since probably it must be delayed two decades. This hypothesis could also explain the enormous musical and lyrical similarities between the first peteneras of the 19th century with Son Soleas Apolas or Soleas Peteneras, which are still sung today. In fact, Solea Apola comes from the word Apolada, that means related to the polo. Let's remember that Tapia considers his Solea as a polo, a musical expression of that time. For example, in the so-called Solea del Fillo that Naranjito de Triana records, he even preserved the line I Solea y no puedo más between the third and the fourth line of the stanza, which, by the way, the lyric that Naranjito sings is currently still singing in Peteneras in Mexico. Remember that El Fillo was a renowned singer a few years after Tapia's Soledad. I would also like to mention that some of the most characteristic lyrics of the Solea Petenera or Solea Apola were used in the 19th century in the Petenera in Spain. Curious, right? These lyrics are In Havana I made a death, Puebla sentenced me, Havana say die, and Puebla say no. Or the following Not even Veracruz is the cross, not even Santo Domingo is holy, not even Puerto Rico is that rich, so that they revere him so much. If this hypothesis were confirmed, one of the pillars of flamenco, the Soleá, would be based on its beginning in music that arrived to Spain from Mexico. To clarify, we are still in the field of hypothesis, and there is still a lot to investigate on this topic, so all the caution. As we progress in the investigation, we will tell you more about it. But of all the hypotheses and theories about how the Solea emerged at this moment, the one that I have presented to you in this episode is the one that provides the most arguments both in quantity and in rigor. As I mentioned at the beginning, due to the limited time, I have only shown you part of this analysis that we hope will soon be published. 
I am even considering preparing with Lenica a monographic video on this topic that we will leave on our YouTube channel Sonidos Olvidados en Nomosigología Creativa. I hope you like this episode. Leave us comments, follow us on social media and subscribe to the podcast to receive notification of new episodes on the leading podcast platforms and on the YouTube channel Sonidos Olvidados en Nomosigología Creativa. And if you already follow us, thank you very much for being part of this community of lovers of the musical history of flamenco. I hope I see you here again in two weeks. <laughs>